Hey everyone, Teddy Baldassar here. Now, in recent times, I think Seiko has really prioritized offering up new watches amongst the Prospects collection. We saw the release of the new Willards, we saw the Built for Ice series, we also saw the very popular SPB 143, and that is really just scratching the very, very outer surface of what has been released. And I think as this happens, things just get lost in the mix. And today we're gonna to be looking at one of those watches that I think does tend to get maybe overlooked or has been overlooked quite a bit. It's just one of my personal favorites and a watch that I've been wearing quite a bit lately uh, throughout the holiday season and then moving into 2021, and that is the SRPD 09. It's an attractive, kind of more masculine, angular profile that comes with the Samurai cases and one of the more attractive dials that you'll find for a Seiko dive watch out there on the market for around 500 bucks. So let's take a closer look at the watch. Hey guys, before we jump into this video, I do want to mention again the latest giveaway that I did announce, a $5,000 watch collection giveaway where you build a collection for $5,000 from watches from our store, teddybaldasar.com. Uh, so fill out the form down below. We'll have all the instructions on it. Basically, you just pick five watches that you would include to build your five watch collection. And we're gonna pick a winner at random. And if you do win, you can pick out one of your five watches for free. So for free, uh, follow all the instructions, get all the links from teddybaldasar.com, click around, figure out what you like, and good luck to everybody that's involved. But definitely check that out before I close that down. Probably will only keep it open for maybe a few more days after this video goes live. Now, if I really wanted to, I probably could create a channel just covering Seiko watches only. And I don't think I'd run out of material in terms of what I could cover because there are just so many Seiko watches out there. Uh, and today we're gonna be looking at one that I think does unfortunately get overlooked a little bit. It is a little bit harder to find nowadays because I think there are people that are onto this watch quite a bit, uh, but still in terms of what I see mentioned quite frequently, it isn't as beloved as many say other models that are out there on the market. And that is this SRPD-09. Now this watch basically combines the common elements that you'll see with those samurai style cases and then brings forth a save the ocean style dial surface, which is probably one of the best in the category of dive watches for around $500. Now first looking at a rundown of this watch, we're looking at a price around $525, case size for around 44 millimeters, if not slightly smaller when measuring with calipers, thickness 12.8 millimeters, lug to lug of 48 millimeters, lug width of 22 millimeters, movement is an automatic Seiko 4R35, water resistance 200 meters, and crystal is hard lex. Now looking at other Seiko dive watches, there's a common theme when you look across pretty much all of their popular models from the more, I'd say, affordable or relatively affordable range. Looking at the SKXs, the Turtles, and the Samurais, that even despite the 44 millimeter case in this instance, pretty much all their watches wear much smaller than what the dimensions would suggest. And in this instance, we're following suit there. With this one coming in, that 44 millimeter case, but 42 millimeters, I would say it wears pretty much on the wrist. And that really is a byproduct of the 48 millimeter lug to lug distance. Now, when I first got into watches, I certainly put a lot of weight on case size. And I think the Seiko Samurai, as well as the Turtles are really the watches that showed me that there's so much more beneath the surface in terms of how a watch wears on your wrist, the angles of the case construction, and also just the lug to lug distance. Because on my six and a quarter inch wrist, I have no problem pulling this one off. It's certainly is not a watch with a small bit of presence. It does attract attention and does have that visual presence, especially with that black and blue kind of color scheme display with that IP coded case. But given its intended purpose, it just simply works in my opinion. The case of this one does come in that ion coating and kind of mirrors what was seen from a watch that I covered previously, the SRPC 93. Now, the only thing that really followed that types of finish was with the crown on that one. And in this one, the entire watch case is actually coated with that material instead. And I think it really pairs well with this dial surface. Now the crown on this watch compared to other Seiko divers, probably the most notable thing is just its location being at the three o'clock, protected by crown guards. And it's a feature that will add some just visual dimensions across the wrist compared to say the more common four o'clock crown position that we'll see with other Seiko divers. Now the crown operates in typical fashion, featuring hand winding at the first position, changing the date at the second position, and adjusting the time at the farthest out point while stopping the second hand in the process. So hacking seconds here. Now keeping this Samurai in place on the wrist is a navy colored silicon rubber strap with matching hardware. Typically Seiko leather straps and bracelets are very poor for the price and are 
usually hard to wear for this $500 price range and below. But I have found that the rubber straps typically are a step up and much more wearable than their straps of other styling varieties. The strap is long, so you might be dealing with a bit of tail on this one depending on your wrist size, but it does really suit the watch well. In addition though, the lugs are drilled to swapping in different straps from third parties are certainly just something to consider. And of course, I do have hundreds of straps on my site with many of them being made in the USA. If you've not seen my video where I go to show where my straps are made, definitely check it out. Visit my friends at Hadley Roma. Uh, and if you are interested in one of the straps, wanna give it a shot for this watch, use checkout code SRPD09. You can get 10% off your order of any strap on the site. I'm probably only gonna make this active for say the first 48 hours after posting this video. So act fast, definitely take advantage. I have some great straps and put them up against any strap for the price. Now when looking at the Samurai collection, probably one of the more signature just attributes is its K-shape, which as I mentioned is highly angular and has a very distinctive architecture, which makes the design visually interesting. There are basically no rounded surfaces other than the dial and the bezel on this piece. On this model, we have a brush finish offset with some polished accents, which complements the more industrial or tactical look presented by the black coating. For me, the lugs are a bit of what makes this watch, which features a flat geometric design that makes the watch instantly recognizable as a samurai and also give an almost squared off effect to the case behind the obviously round diver's bezel. The unidirectional diver's elapsed time bezel itself is stainless steel, is coated to match the case itself, and features a neural design at its perimeter, which makes it easy for grabbing and also matches the crown. Now the bezel has a tiny bit of play, but its rotation and audible click is among the best in the price category. The bezel insert, which is a simple printed aluminum model, is printed in a dark blue and silver color scheme with a general design that matches other samurai watches from Seiko. Now casting across the front of the watch and protecting the dial elements within is Seiko's proprietary Hardlex crystal on the front of this one. The crystal will show more signs of wear over time compared to Sapphire, but is commonplace in Prospect's watches for this price. Now in keeping with the flat angular elements of the case, the dial also features a general design made up of sharper geometric elements. The applied loom filled hour markers are rectangular or trapezoidal in shape. And like many Seiko divers, the 12 o'clock index is doubled up to make for easier orientation. The larger handset at the center offers great legibility in both light and in the dark. With this watch featuring Seiko's exceptional Luma Bright that is probably the best in class for this price range and offers two different shades here. Now the hour and the hour markers all come in a blue hue while the minute hand and the loom pip on the bezel comes in a green hue. And all of them come together to create a very legible experience in the dark. And this is really honestly at this point a very much a Seiko calling card. In terms of Seiko calling cards though, we can't also overlook the fact that the chapter ring on this one is a bit misaligned from what I can tell just barely. So that is a bummer and unfortunately nothing really new for Seiko here. Now moving to the dial and the bezel, they both have a light to dark blue fade color scheme that is probably the most eye-catching aspect of the watch overall. The dial starts with a lighter blue towards the 12 and then darkens to an almost black near the six o'clock. Of course, this gradient dial scheme likely owes at least a tiny bit of inspiration to the Rolex Deep Sea D Blue, but in a watch of this price, this dial finish is really hard to beat. Underneath the light, this is one where this one really shines both figuratively and literally, and the grooved effect of the dial paired with the gradient color offers a true treat each time you look down. The markings on the dial, pretty standard. At the 12 o'clock, the signature Seiko logo. At the six, the Prospects logo and the writing of the watch's water resistance and its automatic movement within, while matching all the ISO standards, making it suitable for diving activities while looking great in the process. So with the many additions to the Prospects collection, we've basically seen the rehaul of many of the movements that are gonna be featuring in the watches of this collection. The 7S26 is pretty much gone for good for the most part, and we haven't really been seeing them much at all, even from the Seiko 5s and up. Now we're really seeing more of the 4R35 and the 3.6 as being more of those entry level movements in many of the say middle of the pack type of prospects divers. And that's what we're gonna be seeing here with the 4R35 within. Now with the now added 6R35 and many of the Seiko watches out there with its 70 hour power reserve, the 4R35 being a very trusty, movement maybe doesn't jump out on paper as much as it maybe once did, but still is a solid workhorse for the money. 
It's operating at a traditional 21,600 vibration per hour, three hertz beat rate. So it is gonna be a slower beat rate than say some of those Miyota 9000 series calibers. It does feature hacking and hand winding. So hacking stopped in the second hand when pulling out the crown to the farthest position. And in terms of accuracy, typically I've found these outperforming and I see great variation depending on the model. Like I see some of these running great in the single digits. And then I see some of them more falling into the lines of traditional out of the box specs. But I would probably say it's more towards the former just considering Seiko is typically pretty good at being overly conservative in the expectations of movement accuracy. Now, when looking at the Seiko SRPD-09, I wanted to feature it on the channel because I've kind of had a lot of fun wearing it personally. And I know for many people out there, there's typically always that stigma people have, like I will never wear a watch over this size, or I'll never wear a watch that's this small. I, I think sometimes it's good to try watches out that maybe you typically wouldn't wear. And I think usually more often than not, you're always surprised about what the outcome is and how I think you can have more fun in this hobby. And I think that was kind of the important reason why I wanted to look at this one, because uh, for myself, I think so often I look at watches and just think like, hey, that's not gonna look that great on my wrist. And you know, hey, I couldn't really pull that one off. And I think sometimes it's unfortunate because you almost limit yourself as an enthusiast to have the complete amount of fun that you possibly can in this hobby. So uh, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to cover it. The other elements though, is the fact that I don't think this one maybe gets as much appreciation as you probably should maybe deserves. Uh, I know it is a little bit harder to find nowadays. I think it can be found for underneath the $500 price range in which it retails at. Uh, and it's definitely out there on the market like many Seiko watches. You kind of just have to go through the weeds to find it. But I think the coated case with that dial is a killer combo, certainly on the larger end of things, pretty straightforward in the movement. But if you factor all those things together, I think that's really a nice winning package from Seiko. But at the end of the day, this really isn't a groundbreaking watch by any means. It's just another awesome Seiko Prospects watch that probably doesn't get the time of day. Combine the case, Samurai, as well as that dial. I think it's just a winning formula and a watch that I think should just be on more people's radar. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I guess we'll ask the question, what are some other watches that you would like for myself and us to cover this year? Uh, in the comments down below, please, please leave a comment, love to see it. Also be sure to take part in that giveaway. All the instructions will be on the form down below. Probably gonna be closing off the entry pretty soon. So definitely act fast on that one. Also definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, full factory warranty for all the products that we do carry. So if something happens with your watch, you're covered and you don't have to pay the bill. In addition, we offer price match. So if you see a watch for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form, then we'll give you a call. And finally, unlike any other authorized dealer on the internet or in the world, nine out of every $10 that we generate from our store goes right back into this content, helping to generate a new generation of watch enthusiasts around the globe. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.